Welcome back to FHN. We're back in the bait lab. Brought to you by Max Lure. I'm Tommy Donlin. We are here to talk about trolling plugs for salmon. Okay. We've got the ocean salmon season about to kick off June 20th. This is a very pertinent subject. It's coming up. This is probably one of my favorite ways to fish because you don't have to use a flasher. It's a direct connection to that king. And you got to see the size of the hooks we use because once you hook them with these, you will not lose these fish. You can stack lots of different plugs on a single downrigger and you're going to be fishing and not even have to worry about them tangling. So that's the beauty of it. So if we go down to the table, you're going to see a variety of plugs down here. Now you're going to see Tomic plugs, different colors, different sizes. And the way I like to look at this is in terms of size is what is the average size of the bait that the fish is eating? What are the size of the fish in the area? And am I really trying, you know, we've had some years where let's face it, you get a lot of coho in the area. And if you're like me, you are intentionally trying to catch kings only, okay? The schnook salmon. And so you are trying to up the size of your lure to avoid those smaller fish. And in recent years, we've had this influx, influx of black cod all over the place. And so to avoid those guys, we've kind of upped our game a little bit. And we've gone to, you'll see here, a couple of the seven inch plugs. This is uh, Tom McCuller 603, and this is the 700G. Now, if you look at Tomic lures, you've got a whole variety and, and plethora of different color options to look from. And the catalog is very extensive, okay? You have to have a decoder ring and, and maybe a mechanical engineering degree to understand the different colors and how they come up with them. But check them out, look them online, a lot of different great colors, okay? Now, if you look here and we just talk colors in general, some of my absolute favorites are the 603, which is this guy right here. And you'll see on any given one of these plugs, they're gonna have the code right on the lip of the plug. Okay, so the 603 is a red lip. 602 is gonna have a pink lip, okay? You're also gonna notice a slight difference in these plugs in terms of hue. You've got a silver hue or pearl hue and then more of a gold hue. So they have a different uh, hue color as well. Now the 600 series glows. Whereas if you wanted something similar, but you didn't want it to glow, you've also got basically the same color, which is a 156 without the glow. It's a very pearl, uh, pearl white plug. And then you've got kind of a rainbow cross hatching over the top. Um, you know, year after year after year, these plugs and these colors have taken more kings than probably any other color. But I'm also a fan of the 500, which is this guy right here. Absolute killer. We've caught a lot of fish on that color. Um, you know, one thing in common that you're going to see is that I've got a lot of glows. I've got a lot of pearl. When you're ocean salmon fishing, you can't go wrong with that. Another favorite, um, tried and true by the, by the salmon fishing population is the 530G, which you're going to see in these, these colors over here. Um, this is your six inch plug and this is your five inch plug. You know, if you're, if you're coming into an area and you're not sure what the fish are eating, I would say start with your five inch. It's kind of your, your average size. It's not too big. It's not too small. You're talking winter black mouth. You're going to drop down to a four inch size, which is more like these guys right here. And then as you determine what those fish are on, if they're on big herring, you definitely want to jump up to the six inch. And if they're on maybe sardines or just kind of that, that horse herring or purple label herring, you've got your seven inch size here. You know, the beautiful thing about fishing Canada, there's a big difference between, you know, the regulations and salmon fishing between Canada and the state of Washington. So in Canada, as an angler, you can run as many rods as you want to run. OK, you can run as many hooks as you want to run on a single lure, but you can't run a single rig with like multiple lures, okay? And that really comes into play when you're like halibut or lingcod fishing, you cannot run a double rig that is illegal in Canada. But as far as salmon fishing goes, it's one lure per rod. So how many how many of these can you stack on a rigger? I would say effectively, you could probably stack three and, and have it be manageable. If you feel you can stack more, you're more than welcome to stack more on a single rigger. And they are easy to stack, okay? So if you think about downrigger management in terms of, hey, I'm out there, there's a lot of fish in the area. The, the thing is, as soon as you put that first plug on the downrigger, the very first one, which is on that downrigger ball, if there's coho in the area, they're gonna attack that plug right on the surface, just like, just like that. So what I like to do is if you look down here, I like to run that seven inch on the bottom, 
okay? Now, every single one of these plugs is gonna get run about 50 to 60 feet back. And this will be on the bottom, and then I'll jump up to a six inch and maybe have a five inch on top, or I'll go seven inch, five inch, five inch. That way, if, you know, I'm waiting for that large Chinook salmon to hit the seven inch, that one's gonna stay swimming no matter what. I'm gonna have a less likelihood of attack by coho, and then I'm getting hit more frequently by those, I would say, mid-teen or low-20 style Chinook on the banks um, or offshore at some of the places like Blue Dot or the shark, shark Fin. You know, these are going to be typically your more productive for your average size Chinook. I don't have to bring the rigger all the way to the bottom, to the, to the downrigger ball, to re-clip in the large plug. So that's just kind of some, some thoughts about, you know, how I rig these in terms of which ones you set on the rigger. Okay, now in terms of you know, how far back on the rigger, um, you know, it's 50 to 60 and typically about 20 feet distance vertically between the bottom plug and then the next plug up. Okay, you wanna have a little bit of distance there, but not too much and you wanna cover a swath of water. So if you got three plugs that are 20 feet apart, you're effectively covering, oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 40 feet there and those two plugs, but salmon have some vision capability. So you could argue maybe that's about 60 feet. Then you've got another rigger, which you can put another three plugs, and you can run that at a completely different depth. So when you think about it, you can really cover about 120 feet of water column by fishing these style of salmon plugs. They're really effective. Okay, let's talk about the rigging a little bit, and let's look at some of the details of these plugs and how they're designed. Now, when you look at these plugs, and it's gonna be really hard to see for you folks out there, but the way they fabricate these plugs, there is a front half of the plug and there is a rear half of the plug, okay? And there is a definite top dead center line of this plug in the front and in the back. Now, when they join these, sometimes they are not perfect. So you will have the top dead center be offset to the left or the port side of the plug on the rear portion of the plug. On the front side of the plug, you will see that top dead center line rotated just a little bit to the right or the starboard, okay? Now this is where your personal preference comes into play. It's totally up to you. You can, you can decide that, hey, I wanna pick the plugs that are perfectly lined up, which is kind of where I am on, on my side of the house. I kind of believe that they lined them up on purpose. They designed a plug that was designed to run a certain way. Some people would argue that, hey, when you get that misalignment between the front and aft half of the plugs, you're gonna get a little wobble or a little bit different kick than you would normally see. I'm just going off my experience in terms of which ones for me get bit, and I look for those ones that are aligned and they work really well, but it's totally up to you. There's no shame in either game. Okay, now when you look down here again at these Tomic plugs, you're gonna see a bar that runs totally through the plug, okay? That's a solid bar. And the thing is, not this one is not connected, this one is fully connected. Um, people will ask the question, well, hey, do I pull the pin, which like you'll see in this plug here, where that line can slide through the plug, okay? Or, and on a side note, I, maybe I said this a little bit backwards, but this, this top hole, okay, is the one where the, that, that bar goes completely through. The one on the bottom of the plug is not, does not go the full distance through. Okay, keep that in mind when you're talking about which line to run through, uh, which hole to run the line through, okay, on the plug. And so, you know, I get all the question a lot is, is hey, how do I know, you know, should I pull the, pull the pin, should I not pull the pin, what do you think, okay? And, and there's a couple, um, you know, frames of thought around what you should do when. My thought is, you know, when you start, okay, and you start fishing a plug, um, you don't know what kind of action it has. You don't know if it's a, it's a catcher or a non-catcher. And so I would start with the bar in it, okay, and tie directly to this solid bar and see how it fishes, okay? And if you've got a known plug that produces and you run another new plug against it and you're tying a solid bar and you give it a good college try and you've run it maybe half a dozen trips and it just doesn't produce it, produce for you, then I would go ahead and pull the pin. Now, there's another advantage to pulling the pin and I'll show you here. And that is that when the salmon gets this beautiful Mustad 95170 in the corner of his or her mouth, this line is, a is allowed to slide 
through the plug, which basically means that that fish is not going to be able to use this plug as leverage to get this hook out of the corner of their mouth. So there's a definite functional advantage to being able to run the line through the plug. The other advantage is that you'll see these beads on this plug. These beads allow me to place this plug a little further aft. Uh, excuse me, allow, allow me to place this hook a little bit further aft on this plug, which if you get a fish that is short striking the plug, um, you're more likely to hook them, okay? Whereas you don't have that luxury here with a solid tie presentation. But again, in, in my book, the number one priority is to catch the fish. What is the number one thing that's gonna cause that king salmon to strike the plug, okay? And that's the action on the plug, totally. That is probably my number one, above color, above anything else, above size, above how you rig it, hook placement, et cetera. It's, is it a swimmer? Okay, does it perform? And then you kind of go down the list with everything else, okay? Um, these are the hooks. This is the 95170 from Mustad. Um, don't forget to pinch the barbs when you go and put them on the, on the, uh, on the plug. And, and I would say that, you know, if you're worried about how heavy these hooks are, the, by the way, the reason that I love these hooks is if you look at the depth of the hook and kind of the throat of the hook, I'm telling you, once you hook these fish with that hook, unless you're not on the rod or you're not keeping the line tight, if you're playing that fish actively, you're going to catch that fish if it's a good hook. You may pull it out if you like barely got a little piece of, piece of his mouth, but typically... Once this hook is in, you're gonna catch that fish. That's why I love this hook. But you know, some folks don't like it because this is it's a little bit heavier hook. Now, what I would offer to you is there's no reason, um, you know, there, it, there's no shame in going to a two hook rig, like maybe a you know Gamakatsu or owner SSW type setup with with two hooks back here, more of something that you would use in a hoochie rig. Um, or in like a you know cut plug or whole herring rig. There's that's fine if you if you want to do that. You feel your plug swims better with a lighter setup back here, no problem. But in my book, you know these hooks are going to win all day long. Okay, one of the other things that I really want to mention is scent. Okay, um, so we've got a series of different fire gels up here. Um, really, anchovy, herring, salmon are my top three. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this scent, and uh, by the way, this stuff absolutely smells, in, in the fish's eye is beautiful, in, in, under my nose, it's really stinky. So I'm not gonna take it out and put it on my finger right now, but it's, you're gonna apply it to the lip of this plug, okay? Go ahead and put it on there. This stuff is really adheres to the plug. And so you wanna put it on the face of that plug, okay? And that's gonna last, honestly, you're gonna, you're gonna see about an hour or more of use out of that one application. Um, you don't have to get crazy with it. Don't, don't put so much on the face of the plug that it changes the behavior of the diving. Don't fill in this radius or this angle on the plug. Just apply a thin layer to the face. When you bring it up, you know, reapply. But you'll be able to tell right away if it's still on there or if it's not. Okay, so I think we've covered how to fish plugs for salmon. Okay, if you got any questions, make sure you hit us up at FHN. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this commercial break.